In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a haunted house vector illustration using very basic Adobe Illustrator processes. You can start by creating a new document in Illustrator by going File and New. And we're going to create a custom canvas. So we would like it to be just a square shape. So I've got 23 by 23 centimeters. We're going to start out with creating the house shape first. So this is made mostly using the shape tool. So if you don't have your rectangle tool available to you, you can just press down on it and you get all of these shape options. So we're going to use the rectangle tool. I'm going to click and drag out a long rectangle. Now here is your fill. And here is your stroke outline at the moment. My rectangle is white and it's got a black stroke outline. See? So I'm going to click on that. I don't want a stroke outline. So click on the stroke and select none. And then double click on your fill. And I'm going to have a light brown color. All right, grab my rectangle again. At this point, go into view and make sure your smart guides are checked because that's just gonna help you line up the shapes. See, it shows you where the bottom of that rectangle is. So this one's sitting slightly further back can go back to your selection tool. I'm going to make this one a fraction lighter than this one. So you can go back to your selection tool easily by just hitting V on the keyboard. Oops. So the shapes are going to get darker as they go further back. So now I've got my four rectangles of different shades. Um, I'm going to add a little roof to this guy here. At this point you can shift things around so they're a little more balanced. So to add a roof to this one, I'm gonna use the pen tool and create a triangle on top. I'm gonna to grab my pen tool here you can hit P on your keyboard to bring that up as well. I'm going to line up with the middle of this rectangle here. So your smart guy will show when you're hovering in the middle. I'm going to click once, twice, three times, four times. And I want to eyedropper that um, triangle so it's the same color as this one here. So to do that, I'm going to hit I on my keyboard or you can grab it from your toolbar here quicker to use the keyboard commands and just click here so it turns the same color. Now to make this an easier shape to work with I'm going to join them together using the pathfinder tool. So um, to select multiple shapes at once hold down shift on your keyboard and select both of those shapes then go to pathfinder if you can't see it there just go window and pathfinder to bring it up and click on the Unite option. Now it's one solid shape. And now I'm gonna create a little roof to sit behind that guy. So again, I'll hover it so it's sitting in the middle. And I'll eyedropper this color. Then I've just got a bit of balance between all of them. Now this one I want moved so it's sitting at the back, so it's sitting behind everything. Um, so what I will do there, actually, I just want this one in front. So to do that, if you want to shift around, 
um, where your shapes are sitting, you'll notice here that all of the shapes I've made are sitting in your layers. So you can click and drag the layers around so, you know, so this is sitting on top. Or an easier way of doing that is going to object arrange and bring to front, front or bring forward. I use the keyboard shortcut so I'll use command and left command and right square bracket so command left square bracket and you'll notice that little shape there see it move command and left square bracket will um, send it backwards and command and right square bracket will bring it forwards shift this guy down all right so we'll create a roof for this shape here For this guy here, I'm going to click and drag out a rectangle shape and I want a slanty roof so I'm going to do that by moving around the anchor points. I'm going to get my direct selection tool and that way I can manipulate the individual anchor points. Hold down shift so it stays in a line and drag that little one in and click to activate the bottom one and drag that one out. So I'm just holding down shift to make sure those anchor points stay in a straight line. And shift that one in and shift that one out slightly. Okay. And I'm going to hold down shift to select all of those rectangles and just make them a fraction darker. And just play around with things as you go along. Alright, while we're on the rectangle tool, we'll make a couple of doors. So I like to hover this in the middle of my shape and hold down the Alt key and that will drag out the shape from the middle of your cursor. And I'm just going to create a copy of this one. So hold down your Alt or your Option key and click and drag out a copy. There we go. Now I am going to make the window shape. So to do that, and I'll just do it off my canvas. Now click and drag out a rectangle and then hold down your rectangle tool and select the ellipse option. I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift so I can get a perfect circle dragged out from the middle. And then use your arrow keys on the keyboard. I'm just going to click up until that's in line with the top there. So we're creating an arch window. Hold down Shift and select both shapes and then use your Pathfinder. Um, panel here and the Unite option to join those shapes together. And then you can fiddle around with how that looks. So to create the frame then I'm going to go Command Control C to copy and Command or Control B to paste in the back and just hold down Shift and drag that back shape out now. I'll eyedropper the same Color as the roof and then up, hold down shift and select both shapes and then in your align panel which might be up the top or otherwise you can go to a window and align to bring it up I'll just I'll do that you can horizontal align it so it's sitting in the center and vertical align it And 
using the rectangle tool to make a little frame and I'm rotating it 90 degrees and I'm going to click copy and then it's the same width as that one there. Now I'm going to group all of these together so that when I'm moving it all the elements move together. So you can use your selection tool and just drag a marquee around that shape and go object and group or command or control G to group that together. So I'm going to have two windows here. So hold down your Alt or your Option key and drag out a copy. And you can hold Shift to make sure that they stay in line. Then I'm holding Alt or Option down to drag out another copy. And again. I'm going to have three smaller ones here, so resize them. I can select, I'm holding down shift and selecting all of those and then in your align panel you can go horizontal distribute space and then there's an even space between them all. Okay, and this one can be a bit of a different shape. I'm using your smart guides to make sure they're all lined up nicely. Okay, and I'll make one last window. This is the window my ghost will sit in. So I'm going to click and drag out the square. I'm going to hold down shift so I get a perfect square shape. An eyedropper that colour there. And then again, go command or control C and command or control B. So I've pasted one in the back. and line them up using your align panel and group them together going command G. So I'm gonna I'm gonna select that roof shape and this shape too so hold down shift to select both and I'm gonna group those together by going command G. Now let's check that these are aligned so select this shape this one, and this one, and then just use horizontal align center, and they're all lined up perfectly. Okay, now we're going to make the balustrading. I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. It's all very simple, basic shapes. Drag out another one. So here's a trick I will teach you for duplicating an action. So I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and drag out a copy of that. Now to keep them perfect space, um, perfectly evenly spaced, um, I'm going to go Command D to repeat that last action and you can keep going Command or Control D all the way along. Now, drag out a copy here. Let's make it a fraction wider. And drag out a copy here. Hold down Option, drag out a copy, and then Command or Control D. Keep doing that all the way along. And then 
go object transform rotate that one 90 degrees and click on copy this just makes sure that everything is of an even width There we go. I'm going to get the rectangle tool and drag out a base for our house to sit on. And I drop for it so it's that dark colour. And the last thing I'm going to do is create the steps. Now hold down Alt or Option, drag out a copy and go Command D a few times and then I'm just going to extend them so that they're staggered in length. So select them all and then go horizontal align center and now you can group them by going command or control G. I'm going to make sure they're lined up with the middle of that door. So to double check you can do this. Beautiful and now we have our haunted house shape. Okay, so you've got your house shape. Now we're going to create a pattern to put inside the roof so it looks like little tiles. So to do that, I'm going to hold down and grab my ellipse tool. And click and drag out an ellipse shape. I'm going to eyedropper that colour. And double click on my stroke outline and just select a lighter color. I don't want the stroke to be too thick so I am going to go to my stroke panel. I can see it here if you can't go to window and stroke and then I'm just gonna reduce that to With my direct selection tool, I'm going to click on that top anchor point and drag it down a little bit. Click on the bottom anchor point and drag that down a bit so it looks like a guitar pick. And reduce that in size. We can always scale the pattern down. So I'm going to go to object with that shape selected pattern and make so you can choose how it's tiled. I'm going to choose hex by row because that looks like a tile pattern. Then you can grab your pattern tile tool and click and drag that in or out a little bit just so it looks like a a roof pattern. Squeezing them a little bit so they're overlapping. Okay, when you're happy with how your pattern is looking, click on save a copy. And I'm just going to call it roof. Okay. And now that pattern has been added to my swatches panel. So I'm click on done. If you don't have your swatches panel up, go to window and swatches to bring it up. Alright, so with your um, roof pieces selected, you can click on that roof tile pattern in the swatches panel. So what's happened is I've clicked on it and it's put it into the stroke 
outline. So I'm going to click on none for stroke and select the fill and then go back to my swatches panel and select that pattern. Doesn't that look lovely? If your pattern is a little bit too big, you can click on the scale tool. So you might have the shear or the reshape tool in front. So just hold that down and select the scale tool. And then hold down your Alt or Option key and just click. Um, you want to transform the pattern, not the object. So just uncheck object and say I want it to be 80% of the original size. Click OK and it will um, resize your pattern. I was happy with how it was before though, but it depends on how big you make your original shape. Okay, I'm going to group everything together again. So with my selection tool, I'm just going to drag a marquee around my house and go Command or Control G to group. And then I'm just going to drag that off the canvas because it's time to make your background. So with my rectangle tool, I'm going to click and drag out a rectangle about three quarters the size of my canvas. And down here, I'm going to select the gradient option. Your gradient window might have popped up. If not, go to window and gradient to bring it up. So here I can, um, I'm going to add another point because I want it to go from a purpley colour to a pinky colour to a yellowy colour. So I'll add another point in there. You can add as many as you like and then you can delete them off if you want to. So to change the colour of the gradient, double click on each slider. This is in grayscale mode. So in the top right hand corner of that panel, I'm just going to select CMYK and I drop a, a dark purpley colour and then I'll double click on the middle one, make that a pinky colour. You can play around with using the sliders as well. And then double click on this one and change the mode to CMYK and I will make that an orangey colour. And then you can play around with the position of these as well. So when you are happy with your gradient, we better change the direction it's going in. So to do that, select the shape and grab your gradient tool. You can hit G to grab that. I'm gonna click and drag from the bottom up and then my gradient will be the direction I want it to be. You can make it go any way you want with the gradient tool. Okay, now I'll click and drag out a rectangle down the bottom make that a dark brown so I'm just going to have a solid colour so check the solid colour option there. Beautiful. Now I'll create some mountain shapes in the background. Okay, so to create the mountain shapes I'm going to get the curvature tool. The curvature tool is sort of like the cheats pen tool. And I'm just going to make some random curvy mountain shapes. Okay, so with the curvature tool, it's going to create curves. If you want it to come out at um, a straight angle, you double click on that anchor point. with the curvy mountain shapes. Okay, 
when you're done making your curves, double click there, double click, double click, and double click. We've got a bit of overhang. I'm going to make that dark purpley colour. Maybe a little bit flatter too. Um, we, yeah, we've got a bit of overhang, so we're going to chop it off. So select your background, hold down shift and select your mountain. I am going and your your ground shape too. And I'm going to get the shape builder. So you can go shift and M to bring that up or it's right there. Now if you just click in the overhang it will turn those bits into shapes. Then go back to your selection tool, click out to deselect everything otherwise you'll delete it all off. And now select the overhanging bits and we are going to send that one behind the ground shape so you can go command and left square bracket to send it behind. We'll also just lower the opacity of it slightly so it looks like it's in the distance. Okay we'll make another layer so grab your curvature tool again the opacity the fraction. Now go back to your selection tool and click on the background, hold down shift and select that mountain shape and the ground shape and then go shift M to bring up your shape builder tool and click on the overhanging bits. Go back to your selection tool by hitting B on your keyboard, deselect everything and then you can just, oops that one didn't And then just select the overhanging bits and delete them off. And then we'll send that one backwards by going command and left square bracket. Okay, we'll make one more. Shift and M, shape builder tool. Click on those end bits and delete them off. And then we'll send that one backwards by going command and left square bracket. And make that one lighter again. There we go. Shift, Command and right square bracket to bring that haunted house to the front. Next we're going to make our moon and our bats to go into the background of our haunted house. So we are going to grab the ellipse tool, hold down your shape tool to select the ellipse tool. I'll just make this off my canvas. So I hold down the shift key to drag out perfect circle and give it a white creamy fill. Then I'm going to make some craters. So I'll click and drag out a round shape. Make it a little bit, a bit more shadowy. And then I'm going to go Command C to copy that shape and Command B to paste it in the back. Drag it out a little way holding down shift to make sure I constrain the proportions and just make that slightly darker again. Okay, hold down shift and select both those circles and go command or control G to group. And now I'm going to hold down my alt or option key and drag out 
a bunch of copies and just resize them. Okay, when you're happy with that, select the main moon shape. We're going to go to Effect, Blur and Gaussian Blur. Check the preview box so you can see what you're doing and just play around with the radius. So we're going to get a nice glowing effect happening. And click OK. Then with your selection tool, just select all of your shapes. Go to Object and Expand Appearance. And then we will group everything together by going Command G. Did we do that already? I forget. It's done now. All right. Drag that onto your canvas. And we want this one to be positioned behind the house. So we're going to go Command or Control left square bracket to send it behind the house. Now for our bats. So we are going to get the ellipse tool and drag out an ellipse shape, give it a black fill. Now with that shape selected, go to Effect, Distort and Transform and Zigzag. Check the preview box and then we're going to play around with the size of the zigzags and how many ridges per segment. Just play around until you get something similar looking to that. Then we're going to expand appearance so see how the oval is still selected. We're going to go expand appearance to turn that shape into an actual shape. And now you can see there's anchor points on that shape. Um, we're going to make it look like a wing now so we'll go to warp and arc might bend it this way so around minus 40 and make sure you've got horizontal checked here and check the preview box to see what you're doing and click OK and again we'll go to object and expand appearance to turn that into a proper shape and play around with the rotation of it as well play around with the size if you want it a little bit Better. Okay, when I'm happy with that, I'm going to go Object Transform Reflect and check Vertical and then check Copy. So now I've got an exact copy of that and on the other side. And I'll just drag that out. I'm holding Shift to make sure it doesn't go wonky. So there's my bat's wings, now I'll give him a little head, so I'll drag out an ellipse and let's get the direct selection tool, select that anchor point, hold down shift and select the other anchor point, now both of them are selected and now I'm going to drag them up so he's got a little pointy face. Go back to your ellipse tool. I'm going to make an ear now. So to do that, I'm going to grab my direct selection tool again, click on the top anchor point, and you should have up the top toolbar here something that says convert. So check that, and it will go pointy. And then with our direct selection tool, we're going to click on that and drag that over to the left a bit. Drag this one down a little bit, and click on that one and drag him down a little bit. You can play around with the handles too, just to alter the shape of your ear. So when you're happy and it looks a little bit like a bat ear, go back to your selection tool, position it on your bat head, and then go to Object, Transform, Reflect, Vertical, and Copy, hold down Shift and drag it out. There we go. All 
All right, I'm gonna select all of that and then in my Pathfinder panel, I'm gonna click on Unite and that's join that into one shape. So it's just easier to work with. And then I'll position it over my back wings. I'm gonna select both wings by holding down Shift and I'm gonna group those. Go to Command or Control G to group those. Now I'm gonna hold down Shift and select my bat head and just in my Align panel, I just like to make sure things are straight and even. I'm gonna go Horizontal Align Center. And Command G to group the whole bat. So I've positioned one over the moon here. I'm gonna hold down Alt and drag out the copy. Another little guy there. And let's drag one over the other side too. And then you are happy with the position of your bats. You can group each little cluster of bats so they're easier to work with and move around. And then you're done. Now we're going to work on the objects in the foreground. So I'm going to have a creepy tree over here and a grave stone over here. So to make your tree, you're gonna use the pen tool. Make sure you've got a stroke, just a stroke and no fill. So I'm gonna make a jagged shape like that. We're gonna go to our stroke panel. If you can't see it, go to window and stroke to bring that up. But we're gonna make that a little bit wider. Then I'm going to get my width tool which is here. You can go shift and W to pull up your width tool if you can't see it, if it's not in the foreground. And if you look here with your width tool just clicking on that bottom anchor point oops, you can drag it out so the bottom of it will widen and then you can do that with all these points here with your width tool. So widen that. And then you can shrink that down so it comes to a point. I'm going to roughen that one up a little bit. So go to effect, distort and transform and roughen. Check the preview box so you can see what you're doing. I'm going to check the smooth option and reduce the size and reduce the detail. So the size of these little roughen points might have to be, or maybe corner. Corner would look cooler actually, it's a little bit creepier. You can play around in whatever effect you prefer, you just go with that. So my size is 1%, the detail is 4 and I've checked corner and I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to go object and expand appearance to turn that into a shape. I'm going to get my direct selection tool, also hit A on your keyboard and I'm going to drag that down to form the base of the tree. Okay, now we're going to make the branches in pretty much the same way we made the trunk. So grab your pen tool, make sure you've got just the stroke outline, no fill. And then just randomly create these branches.
and then we can even select that trunk and go to Pathfinder and click Unite to make it one big shape. It's easier to manage then. Reduce the size of that and drag it onto your canvas. This is sitting in front of our house. It's where it's a good thing we grouped those bats because we can shift them around. Okay, we've got a bit hanging over the edge of the canvas. So I'll just make sure this is lined up with the bottom. That's okay, we can select the sky, we can hold down shift and select the tree, then we can grab our shape builder tool by going shift and M, or there it is there, and just click in those overhanging parts, go back to your selection tool, deselect everything, and then grab the overhanging bits and just hit delete on your keyboard to delete them off. We'll create our shadow as well, we'll just do that with the pen tool and we'll be, we'll be rough. So my shadow is going to come out this way. I don't know if that's accurate at all, but it's just for just for the effect of it, so Well, I drop of that colour and go to opacity up the very top and just drag that down a fraction. And then select that shadow piece and your ground piece. Go back to your shape builder tool by going shift M and Click on those overhanging pieces there, go back to your selection tool, select the overhanging pieces and delete them off. Okay good, now we'll make our tombstone. So to do that we're just going to do what we did with the arch window, so I'm going to drag out a rectangle shape, eyedropper that stair colour, maybe even the moon colour. And we've got a bit of balance across the composition. Grab your ellipse tool, hover it in the centre of that shape, hold down alt and shift so it drags out from the centre. Then use your arrow keys just to bring that shape upwards. Go back to your selection tool, hold down shift and select both of those shapes, then click on the unite option in Pathfinder. You know, grab your type tool I'm going to type in R, I, P. If you don't have your type options there, you can go to Window and Type. I am going to choose Evil of Frankenstein because it's a horror-themed illustration. Once you've done that, you can go to Create Outlines here or you could right click and go create outlines there and that turns all those letters into a shape so you don't have to go fiddling around with the font size, you can just resize your font. So I'm going to select the font and the gravestone, then go to my align panel and make sure they're centered by clicking on horizontal align center and now I'm going to go command or control G to group them. I'm going to hover my cursor around the corner and just rotate it slightly. Now I'm going to make some dirt. So I'm going to make piles of dirt. Make them the same colour. So eyedropper your ground colour. And I'm just going to drag out lots of little circle shapes. Good. That looks like it's been dug in to the ground. Um, now I'm going to 
the hold down shift select all those dirt pieces and group them together and now I'm going to create a shadow so to do that I might just use the pen tool And I'll eyedropper that tree colour. And go command or control left square bracket just to send it to the back of the gravestone group. Very good. the finishing touches we're going to make a ghost to live in your house so you truly know that it is haunted. So start by dragging out an ellipse shape and you can eyedropper the moon colour. Alright, now we are going to go to our pencil tool. You might have the shaper tool or smooth tool in front. We want the pencil tool. You can also hit N on your keyboard to bring it up nice and quickly. We're going to double click on that and drag our pencil tool options all the way up to smooth and click OK. Now you need to make sure this circle shape is selected. Um, so if it's selected with your pencil tool, start by drawing along the path. I'm going to do like a squiggly ghost shape and finish along the path there. And then you can, you can go and um, adjust that shape if you need to. So I might want to bring it in a little bit. So I'm going to drag. As long as you start by drawing along the path and finish by drawing along the path, then you can alter what it looks like. Okay, that's a fine ghost shape. You can also hold down that pencil tool and go to your smooth tool and then just with that shape selected, run your smooth tool along and that will limit the number of anchor points you've got and just make it smoother. Let's, let's do the same thing with the eyes so you can practice using the pencil tool. So I'm gonna have these black eyes with that shape selected, I'm going to get my pencil tool and then I'm going to do this. It's looking so, it's so haunted. Alright, good. And I'm just going to go object, transform, reflect, copy. And I better give him a big ghosty mouth. I'll drag out an ellipse. And I'm gonna using my direct selection tool, I'm just gonna play around with the anchor points. So I'm dragging down handles. Because it's a bit of a warped shape, you just have fun experimenting. It's a good chance to see what happens when you in the handles. So when he looks haunted and distressed enough for your liking. that's fairly haunted. We'll go back to the selection tool, select all of those shapes and go command G to group them. Then I am going to reduce the opacity of my ghost affection and put him in that window there. 
And there you are. You have made yourself a haunted mansion complete with ghosts, gravestones, scary trees and bats. Well done.